Okay, so these are Flor Florida bananas here. We're growing in North Florida. And beautiful, I just ate one of the bananas and they were delicious. Kind of a small, half-sized banana. Yep, so this variety right here is the um, dwarf Orinoco. And the Orinoco is the, the more common variety that you see growing in you know uh, ditches and septic mounds and things like that around. They produce fairly well, but they aren't the tastiest and they're very wind sensitive. Um, you see oh thing? yeah, yeah. That stand over there, that's the Orinoco. These are the same ones I have growing behind my house. They're right. the full size. Right. And, and they, they don't produce the, a lot of bananas either. Right. They make smaller stalks. And they're square, kind of. They've got those ridges on the edges, a good determining factor. When you find one of those square bananas, it's more than likely one of those. Um, but the ones that we just ate is this variety, which is the Dwarf Namwa, and it's distinct by the pink it's beautiful. hue in the trunk. Absolutely beautiful. That's a gorgeous. Right. How do they do through the cold? Um, they get frostbit at the top, um, but if it's not a super hard freeze, um, the trunk survives. So basically what happens is I leave the leaves on until the frost, and then when the frost kills the leaves, I use the leaves and wrap them around the trunk and insulate the trunk. Um, but that's usually not necessary unless it gets below, I would say, 20 for a long period of time. They will grow right back from the deadhead, which is what I call the top, the top part that gets frost bit. And you just literally cut it off at the trunk and the leaf will spiral right out of the center and start to grow a, another, you know, another leaf set. And that's one of the interesting things about banana trees. They're not technically trees, they're herbs. And their trunk is not necessarily a stem or a trunk, it's pseudo stem is what they call right. it. Because this connects all the way down into the roots. It's like a big lily. It's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and the flowering head, of course, is beautiful. Unfortunately, I don't have any flowering in the, in the garden right now, but um, you know, probably my favorite looking banana I got from you, David. This is the dwarf, dwarf red. red. They are so and beautiful. They are so beautiful. This plant has been in the ground for four months. It has made <laughs> six pups. Man. We've already dug one up and transplanted it, and there are five here now. It is extremely happy. Um, it's it's uh, really beautiful. I've heard it's not the greatest producer. It may produce every sure, other year. Sure. But uh, the beauty of it uh, just struck me. I yeah. mean, it looks like it's lacquered, yes. varnished. And uh, the leaves are a good full shade darker than most any other banana leaves that I've seen. Um, and then here again, you got the, the combination of the red and the black. On this, this is a FHIA. Wow, that's beautiful. 17, so it's a, the Honduras Research Center. Uh, wow. Agricultural Research Center created 25 to 30 different varieties of hybrid bananas. Um, this is one, I believe it's number 17. Uh, this one down here is number 25. <laughs> so as it is right now, we've got seven varieties. This is uh, North Honduras here. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> These are beautiful. Yeah, I love them. And this one has a really beautiful coppery kind of underside. It's kind of diminished Look at now. That. But you, when it hit, the wind hits it and it sort of flashes this nice little coppery color. Um, so yeah, for Shit. ornamental appeal and um, you know edibility, I absolutely have fallen in love with bananas. Um, one of the reasons I decided to do this here is because this ground is naturally very wet and they need almost twice as much water as yes. we get rain every year. So they take a hundred inches of rain. We get an average of 50 to 60 inches of rain a year in a good rain year. So the last three years running, we've had really good rain. Um, this actual last week and a half, two weeks has been the driest I recall in almost two years. Yeah. But uh, they dried out a little bit yesterday and I irrigated the entire garden. Like I told you with the rain tank, watered everything from one spot at the top of the hill, which is really fun. Yeah, that's one of the things. People ask me, how do you get your bananas to produce in North Florida? And I find they're usually doing two things wrong. One of them, they're not getting enough water. Exactly. And secondarily, they're cutting the bananas down to the ground after the freezes oh, and letting yeah. them grow back because yeah. they look so pretty. Right. They just cut all the top of it off. And right. I said, you know, it's got to restart. It's yeah. never going to bloom if you right. do that. Sure. Sure. So save that stem. Right. And I, I mean, I'm looking at some of these stems, like the one back there we were looking at, yeah. big chunky thing. Yeah. Um, that holds a lot of water in it overnight. So I'm imagining to freeze that stem through, you'd have exactly. to have some serious cold. Exactly. Whereas a more slender right. tropical variety might not pull it off. Right. Yeah, they're probably even farther than us on the moisture content scale. They're probably 90% water, I would say. Yeah, you can cut um, through one of those things with a machete and it splashes. You can dig a bowl in it and it will fill with filtered water. <laughs> Clean, green, just beautifully tasting, cool water, 
right out of the trunk. So if you're ever dying, wow, I did not know that banana patch, lots of available water, just like a cactus, just like a cactus in the desert. These hold an enormous amount of water. Um, so any other varieties you'd recommend for uh, this area or North Florida or the, maybe uh, Southern Georgia? The Namwa and the Orinoco are really reliable, good producers. Um, I've had luck with and I've had very seldom luck with bananas. I'm just getting into the groove and having a regular, every year I get at least one, two bunches. Um, and the uh, FHIAs, these two varieties are plantain crosses, so their fruit is much larger. Hmm. So even if it produces a smaller bunch, you get about the same amount of weight as you would with yeah. the ladyfinger style. Yeah, that's smaller. nice. Um, and then of course there's all of the variation in height. Uh, these can get up to 16 feet. The Orinoco and the Namwa, um, respectively, the Namwa gets about eight, ten feet tall. The Dwarf Orinoco only gets about five to six feet tall. So That's very nice. Range you can use some varieties. Mekong Giant get forty feet tall, <laughs> taller than any of these trees around us here. I mean. My uh, goodness, I can't even imagine. Right? I, I mean, I can't hardly imagine it either. So that's a monstrous tree, um, er, everywhere down to a uh, one foot tall banana. So there, there's the entire range in there. I've seen ones that are at, at three or four foot had uh, a big stalk coming out of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and down at uh, Hart in uh, Lake Wales area. Oh, uh, sure. I know, yeah, I know Hart. I've been there. Um, so I just recently found the best place for finding bananas in Florida is a, uh, a nursery called Florida Hill. They're outside of Orlando. They have 45 varieties of bananas, and wow. they are all less than ten dollars. Oh, that's marvelous! It's See, I mean, it's the worth best it. Price I've seen. It's really the experimentation for me that's that me figured too. out which bananas were the ones that we're going to take here. and which ones weren't. Because I killed some too. Yeah. Do you uh, have the you have the black right? The Thai black. Yes. Yeah. How is it doing? Uh, it does amazing. Color? It's got some fruit on it now. No kidding. I don't know that they're going to be any good. Right. I mean, they, they look like. <laughs> yeah. Some it looks of them are strictly ornamental. I'll give you yeah. a couple because yeah, it, it looks incredible. I would love to have it just as a specimen. It's Absolutely. like ebony. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. These are the four newest varieties additions to the garden. Um, this is the FHIA one, also known as Goldfinger. Um, this is FHIA two, Mona Lisa. <laughs> this one's called African Rhino Horn. It's a plantain. It'll get I've 20 feet tall one. and have two foot plantains. Two foot. Two foot plantains. What? Uh, this is a. This is called a <laughs> Sumatrana cross. That's beautiful. So there's a variegated variety called Zabrina that doesn't make much fruit and it's very variegated. And has a lot of red in it. This one is a cross between a Cavendish and a Zabrina, and they call it Sumatrana. So this actually makes an edible fruit, very sweet dessert style banana with a really attractive. Okay. Pink and red stalk. Red it looks a little bit like uh, Musa velatina, the pink uh -huh. fuzzy right. bananas. The pink fuzzies, right? They have also have that variegation, and then, you know, these are all pups from the red that you gave me. It's just been That's it's looking been the great. most most reproductive banana I've I've worked I, with. I've had them at a foot tall making pups. It's crazy. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had one that you had given me in a pot. This one actually had this one growing right next to it. <laughs> Literally, it was, they were right there in the same pot together. So yeah, they definitely will reproduce at a very early age. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, it's a great, very low maintenance crop once you get the soil built. It's like you fertilize them once a year, you make sure they get enough water, and that's really it. Uh, people tend to make it a little more complicated uh, than it needs to be, thinking that it's too, uh, you know, uh, the climatic factors are too sketchy for growing bananas, but there are three or four varieties that can survive, you know, negative five degrees. Wow. Um, and so they can be snowed on and they'll come back the following year and make fruit that's not as great as the tropical varieties by any means. It makes sense because I saw cantaloupe lilies growing in Tennessee. Sure. You know, and sure. they're they're very close yeah. to bananas. Yeah, it's the same thing. Is the trunk doesn't freeze, yeah. then they can grow back and global warming, it's like the hard freezes are becoming more erratic but tend to be less in number as well. So that makes that's it a little cool. easier. Thank you, man. Yeah, my pleasure.